All right, you guys, welcome back to another video lesson from ICU Advantage. My name is Eddie Watson. Now, my goal in creating this YouTube channel was to try and give you guys the confidence to succeed in the ICU by taking these complex critical care subjects and really breaking them down and making them easy to understand. I hope that I'm able to do just that. And if I am, and you would be interested in more critical care content such as this video here, then make sure you subscribe to the channel down below Make sure you hit that bell icon and select all notifications, that way you never miss out when I release a new lesson. Now, in this particular lesson here, we're going to be taking a look at what is now the fifth link in the American Heart Association's chain of survival. Now, while the actions and algorithms really preceding this here certainly have greater impact, the significance should not be downplayed of really having a systematic approach to handling the care of our patient after the cardiac arrest. So in this lesson, we're going to take a look at just that with a discussion around the AHA's recommendations for post-cardiac arrest care. All right, so while most of our ACLS algorithms up to this point are focused on saving a person's life or preventing deterioration to really needing to do just that, these guidelines are focused on continued improvement in morbidity and mortality, and even more importantly, quality of life for our patient. And the studies give us numbers. In fact, most deaths occur up to 24 hours post-cardiac arrest, and thus the impact of having this systematic approach can really truly be profound. And we really do this by focusing on care that's centered around optimizing tissue perfusion of vital and organs. So the approach to improving mortality and quality of life for our patients truly involves a multidisciplinary approach and in reality will continue on through some time with their care, but this is going to be something focused on the interventions and actions that are recommended immediately following ROSC from cardiac arrest. Now, this algorithm is designed to outline the steps that we should immediately be assessing and managing. And to start off, there are two big areas of focus. Now, those areas are optimizing the ventilation and oxygenation for our patients and then treating their hypotension. So first and foremost, we need to ensure that our patient has a good airway and that we are supporting their breathing. Now, most of the time, these patients are going to be either unconscious or unresponsive. And if it hasn't already been done at this point, then we're most likely going to need to use an advanced airway to allow for mechanical support. We do also want to be using waveform capnography, again, if that's not already in place because monitoring our patient's end tidal CO2 plays an important role in ensuring not only adequate CPR is taking place, determining when ROSC has occurred, as well as also monitoring for proper ET tube placement, as well as in the aid of our management of this patient. Now, during the actual rest, we're typically using 100% FiO2. But once that's over, we do want to titrate the oxygen requirements to maintain a SAT of 94% or higher. If they are maintaining good SATs, it is okay to decrease the oxygen that we are providing to them. Now, in addition to oxygenation, we also need to be thinking about ventilation. And the key here is to avoid overventilating or hyperventilation in our patient. So our focus here is on not ventilating them too much or too fast. Our goal here is to achieve an end tidal CO2 of about 35 to 40. Now, we do also run the risk of increasing intrathoracic pressure if we ventilate them too much, which then can have negative effects on our patient's hemodynamics. Also, another thing to consider is that CO2 is a potent vasodilator. And so if we're hyperventilating them, we're going to be blowing off too much of that CO2, and thus the reduced levels can potentially decrease cerebral blood flow, which is going to be something really important for our patients post cardiac arrest. Now do remember and keep in mind though, that individual situations with individual patients could warrant either permissive hyper or permissive hypocapnia. So in addition to what we just talked about, we do want to be treating our patients hypotension when their systolic blood pressure is less than 90 or their MAP is less than 65. Now, hopefully you already have it, but if not, make sure that you get IV IO access immediately. 
And even if you do have it, it's going to be really important to make sure that they're actually patent and functional. Now, once you have good IVIO access, then we're going to want to treat our patient's hypotension, first with fluids and then with the use of vasopressors. So we're going to start off with one to two liters of either normal saline or LR. Now from there, if pressors are needed, then we want to consider one of the following three as a continuous infusion, and that would either be our norepinephrine, our epinephrine, or dopamine. I'm going to link to a lesson covering ICU drips and specifically vasopressors if you do want to learn more about those. Now we do want to be titrating these medications to achieve a systolic blood pressure greater than 90 or a MAP greater than 65. And there's no need to overdo it here. So if their systolic blood pressure is 91 or their MAP is 65, that that may be fine. Again, kind of dependent on what your patient's individual situation is. Now it is important to note that immediately following ROSC that we want to ensure that we're identifying and treating the underlying causes of the arrest if they are still present for the patient. So here again, remember your H's and T's from the systematic approach that we talked about in an earlier lesson. Now, as soon as possible, we want to get a 12 lead ECG. And the purpose here is that we want to assess our patient for a STEMI or those highly suspected of acute MI. Now, if this is the case, then we're going to want to have rapid activation of cath lab for coronary reperfusion. Now, immediately following that, or if our ECG is not suspicious for an MI, then the next is a simple step, and it's really the assessment of our patient's ability to follow verbal commands. At this point, if they're not following commands, then we want to consider initiating the targeted temperature management or hypothermia protocol. This is actually a complex subject and one that's highly requested here on this channel. And so soon I will be doing a detailed lesson looking at just this. But it is important to know that targeted temperature management is really the only therapy that's been shown to improve the neurological functioning in patients post cardiac arrest. Now, finally from here, if they're not already there, truly the, the best place for continued care immediately following the cardiac arrest is going to be in the ICU. The patient should be transferred there for ongoing management and closer observation by the teams of people that specialize in just that. And that was our review of the post-cardiac arrest algorithm. Uh, I really hope that I was able to break this down and make it easy to understand for you guys. Uh, if I was and you enjoyed this lesson, please leave me a like down below. It really goes a long way to support this channel in the eyes of the YouTube algorithm. Uh, as well as leave me a comment down below. I love reading and responding to each one of your comments out there. Also, share this lesson with anybody else you think might find it useful. Uh, if you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel down below. And as always, a special shout out to the awesome YouTube and Patreon members out there. I am so appreciative of the support that you guys are willing to show me and this channel here. For the rest of you guys, if you'd be interested in showing additional support for this channel, you can join the YouTube membership down below or head on over to the Patreon page and check out some of the additional perks that you get for doing just that. You can also support this channel by following some of the links down in the video description, as well as checking out some of the awesome t-shirt designs that I have for you guys down there as well. Make sure and stay tuned for the next lesson in this series. Otherwise, check out a couple awesome lessons I'm going to link to right here. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great day.